a man who became the WKC light heavyweight champion, the WKA heavyweight champion, the ISKA heavyweight champion, oh, and beat Mark Juice to the absolute gills, Coleman, to become the second ever heavyweight champion in UFC history. Maurice Smith is often defined by his accomplishments in the UFC and has even gone down in the Hall of Fame for it. However, Maurice Smith began fighting professionally in 1980 and his career in the UFC is all but the tip of the iceberg in the overall fighting career of Maurice. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the career of Maurice Mo Smith and see how a kickboxer became the second ever heavyweight champion and went down in the Hall of Fame with only four professional wins with the organization. Maurice L. Smith was born December 13th, 1961 in Seattle, Washington. Little is known about Maurice's childhood other than how he began training martial arts. And when I mean little is known, I mean legit next to nothing. I swear I went through 15 plus pages of Google, watched about 50 plus YouTube videos, obviously went to his wiki, and nothing. I mean, this guy could have been crafted in a lab in the 60s in order to defeat Mark the Juicer Coleman 30 years later, and I wouldn't be able to tell you different. Anyways, speaking of Mark, that's kind of all the interviewers ever seem to ask him about. The man's been in about 100 plus fights, and all they ever ask him about is one. Either way, sorry about the rant, we'll get into all of that a little bit later. Maurice began training MMA after running away from a bully and absolutely immersing himself in the world that Bruce Lee movies created. He wanted to be able to defeat his bullies just like Bruce Lee defeated his foes. So what did a young Maurice do? he signed up for the absolute most deadliest martial art known to man, Aikido. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, Maurice. He actually signed up for Taekwondo, Karate, and Wing Chun. So, basically Aikido. <laughs> I know that gets you Karate and Taekwondo boys mad, doesn't it, huh? Anyways, Maurice would continue training and would eventually stumble upon and discover kickboxing. He loved it. He found his new passion in life, and that's exactly what he would continue doing for the next three, three, well, if you include MMA, four decades of his life. During this time, Maurice would also pick up football and gymnastics, but that's about all I could find about his high school days, to be honest. And that's all based off of this one article I found here. So let's pray to the MMA gods that that's all accurate. Maurice would begin his amateur fighting career at just 19 years old. And after seven fights and seven victories, Maurice would make his professional debut. Unfortunately though, he was going up against a former world champion and would gas out in the seventh round. However, Maurice would go back home, grind and juice, grind and juice, and a little bit more grinding and juicing. Oh wait. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about Mark Coleman for a second there. Steam and little more juice, little more juice, little more juice. Anyways, Maurice would go back home, work his butt off, improve, improve his kickboxing, and more importantly, improve his cardio, and would go back after two fights, rematch Tony Morelli, the man that beat him in his debut, and win the victory. Win the victory? <sighs> So, sorry, I'm a little bit crazy here. Win the fight and obtain the WKC Light Heavyweight Championship in only his third professional fight. I mean, how many people can say they became champs in only three fights? It took Brock four fights and Randy four fights as well. So if that doesn't make Maurice the GOAT, then I don't know what does. Later that same year after defeating Morelli, Maurice would go up against one of the greatest kickboxers in MMA, well, MMA, greatest kickboxers in history, Artem the Russian Hammer Lobov. No, I'm just kidding. He'd go up against Don the Dragon Wilson. I don't know why I forgot that for a second. Unfortunately, though, he would lose pretty badly. 
but he definitely proved that he can hang in there with the best of them. And after that fight, he'd move up a weight class to heavyweight and get the WBA heavyweight strap. And after winning that title fight, he'd go unbeaten for the next 15 fights over 10 years. And to be honest, I know in his wiki and all these videos, they stress how impressive it is that he went unbeaten for 10 years. And don't get me wrong, that's cool. But 15 fights isn't that much in 10 years. I mean, come on. If by some God-given miracle, I can go in the octagon tomorrow and somehow win a fight, and then, listen, don't step in there for the next 20 years, and then pay some plumber off the streets who's 400 pounds and would gas out in three seconds and win a fight then, I could say, hey, I'm unbeaten for 20 years. I mean, now that I think about it, anyone need some extra cash? I got some legacy built in to do. <laughs> Anyways, Maurice's kickboxing reign would come to a halting stop when going up against one of the kickboxing all-time greats, Peter Arts. He would go in there and lose via decision, but then would get an instant rematch, only to get knocked the fuck out. Anyways, that would pretty much begin the rocky parts of Maurice's kickboxing career. He would win a few, get on a good streak, then lose a few, win a few, then get put right back in there with Peter, only to lose via decision, then win a few, get back right in there with Peter, get TKO'd, and pretty much that would kind of mark the end of Maurice's kickboxing career. On a downward trend, Maurice knew that he needed to make a change. That's when he discovered Pancreas, a fighting organization that was putting on fights, not like MMA that we see today, but mixed rule fights that got Maurice interested. In his first MMA fight, Maurice would see himself going up against Mourinho Suzuki. Mourinho? Mourinho. I don't know. Mourinho Suzuki. The fight was essentially kickboxing ruled, and Maurice was actually able to knock Suzuki the fuck out via head kick. Well, actually, I don't know how he knocked him out, to be honest. But I'm going to say head kick just so it looks like I know what the fuck I'm talking about, okay? Either way, in his next fight, Maurice would see himself in a rematch. However, this time with very different rules. In the first round, there was a tire placed in the center of the ring and both fighters needed to keep one leg in the tire at all times. In the second round, both fighters had one arm taped around the head of the other fighter. And in the third round, both fighters were blindfolded and given shots of adrenaline. Okay, maybe that's a complete and utter lie and I made that all up, but they did fight with different rules in that second fight. In the first round, both fighters wore gloves, second round no gloves, and third round gloves once again. Needless to say, after this whole rant, Maurice would go on to lose via armbar and get his arm reefed on really bad. Maurice would keep fighting in pancreas and rings. They both weren't really MMA organizations, but yeah. In there, he would see himself fighting against the likes of Boss Rutan, Ken Shamrock, Tushi Kasoka, Kiyoshi Tamura. I'm sorry, I butchered those last two names so bad, but they're fucking legends of the sport. I mean, they all are. However, Maurice wasn't able to get a win over any of them. But it didn't matter at all. With a record of 6-7, and seven, he would see himself making his pro MMA debut, like for real MMA debut, in the UFC for the heavyweight strap against Mark Coleman. And if you don't know who that is, hey, shameless promotion, go and check out my last video. It's a fucking banger, all right? Either way, back to Maurice. It would be here in this fight where he would make UFC history and go down in the record books and become a UFC Hall of Famer forever. Here, in his fight against Mark, he was able to utilize good guard skills, get back to his feet, mitigate the ground and pound completely, and kick the shit out of Mark's legs. And to be fair, Mark did gas out before even the two minute mark, not to take anything away from Maurice's great performance. But if I'm gonna be honest, my 80-year-old grandma, with over 40 years of smoking under her belt, probably would have lasted longer in there than Mark did. But either way, after winning the belt, Maurice 
was on top of the world, becoming the second heavyweight champion in history and winning one of the biggest upsets ever in the organization. After pulling through with the big upset win against Mark, Maurice would see himself winning his first title defense against Tank Abbott via exhaustion. Yeah, not kidding. I swear that's the most common form of submission in these early UFCs. Like half these guys must have been off the street or honestly off the juice and had little to no gas tank whatsoever. Either way, take in that with this one title defense, he'll have more defenses than Boss Rutan. Yup. Boss may have gotten the best of him in Pancreas, but I think we all know who the real goat is. Yeah, that's my boy Maurice. Okay, all jokes aside, this would definitely be the peak of Maurice's career. After defending his title, Maurice would go 7-7 seven and seven in his next 14 fights. He would lose the title to Randy, then lose to Kevin Randleman, but would pick up two nice wins over Marco Hua. Don't know who Marco is? Well, I'm gonna be honest, all you really need to know is that all the Brazilians in the world, and I mean all of them, they ask him in every interview why he's in the Hall of Fame and Marco isn't. So take that, you Brazilians. Anyways, all jokes aside, Mark would see the last fight of his career in 2013 and would cap off his 43-year-long fighting career. Yeah, I didn't stutter. This guy actually fought for 43 years and still talks and strings together sentences like a real human being. So yeah, to recap, Maurice definitely wasn't one of the best fighters in UFC history, but he was one of the best kickboxers for a certain stretch of time. However, he did show us in MMA that strikers do have a place too, and that wrestlers aren't the only thing that's viable in the sport. He did also dethrone one of the juiciest champions in UFC history and went in the record books and UFC history, well, UFC Hall of Fame for doing so. So yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen, Maurice Mo Smith. If you're watching this, wow, I can't believe you watched that long. Holy shit, nobody watches this long. Not even my mom does. So yeah, thanks.